Well, would this be Voss if we started on time? No. 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 I'll be there to barn the backer. Seven o'clock. Yeah. About eight thirty, he can roll in. You're half done. But now, if you got time to eat, you could say, "Voss, you want some food?" He said, "No, I'm not hungry much." But if he ever sit down beside it and on your table area, he'd eat a half a pig. <laughs> he could put some food away. Those of you that has fed him all of these years, Miss Snell and Roy Lee and all of you, the families that have fed him, I don't know who has and hasn't, but if he went to your house, most of you fed him at least once or twice. But we're saddened today to have to say goodbye, and I, I think that he would appreciate the picture that's on the front of the bulletin, and I think it's about as good as you could have of him. Uh, that was in his younger days when he thought he was the strongest man around, and he was pretty tough back in his days. But I'm glad today that we have the privilege to say goodbye to him. You know, sometimes in wars and whatever goes on, there certainly comes a sad day. People lose their loved ones out on the ships in the ocean and never can see them again. Voss served his time. He came forth victorious and lived a 89-year life here in the area, so to speak, after war times and service time. Read the bulletin, read the information about him. But thank you again for being here today. I want to say that. I know Miss Snell and Lof and Eloise and the family members appreciates every one of you. And knowing the Beasley family and the Rhodes family and these people, I know that there's a joy. If they ever ran into you, they believed in talking and enjoying you, and they had a good time in doing so. They were special people, and I thank you for coming today to his memorial service. It's a joy to be here. I'm Bill and Owl. Some of you know us. I've known Vol since I was probably about 10 years old or maybe younger. And I have known him 70 years at least. And I'm certainly thankful for the times we had together, the times we wrestled a little bit, the times we ate a whole lot, the times we had in working together, and the many times he asked me to work for a dollar a day on an old tractor or his car or something like that. Just two weeks ago, I was called by him to come and crank my tractor. I said, well, boss, you're too old for this tractor. So therefore, I gave in and went down and cranked it. That was the end of that. And I pray that today that the Lord's got him a real tractor in heaven, one of those you don't have to work on every week. Every hour, every time you crank it, he had to call me. <laughs> he believed in antifreeze. He believed in a lot of things. When he had a cold weather come, he'd get him a gallon antifreeze, set it in the back foot. Five years later, his engine be busted all to pieces in his vehicle. He said, I had antifreeze in it. I said, Voss, you're supposed to put it in the engine. <laughs> and he was just that type of person, full of joy. If it blew apart, it just blew apart. He'd fix it somehow or buy another one cheap as he could, and we would go on. His last vehicle, just a day or two here back, he called me and said, can you go to Fedfield? I think him and Brother Dennis Dunn had went and found a car. Well, he said, can you go with me down there to get my car? I said, boss, you're buying a car for about, I don't know how much seen. I was about ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000. And there I was riding with a man and a plum banker in my car and didn't know it. And he bought that car with cash money. And I said, oh, Lord, if I'd have known that, I'd have shot you on the way, boss. But anyway, he was just that type of person. He looked after his business, and he enjoyed everybody else. But in his heart, he was just a special person. You ain't never seen one like him. You never will again. But Voss Beasley was my friend and somebody that loved all of you. Yeah, he'd quarrel with us occasionally. He'd get upset with us. I said, Voss, heaven is in a better condition than that. So we got to do differently. But anyway, 
Voss was a man that you couldn't help from loving, whether it was a trip to see somebody yonder, here, or whatever. He was always certainly willing to go forward. I want to say today, thank you. And Brother Freddie, we're going to call on you directly and let you say something. And I'm so glad today to say that it's a joy to be here, but yet a sadness in that we have to say goodbye to him. But in the morning, we'll see him again. We know he's not dead. He's absent from the body, present with the Lord, according to my Bible. And I believe that be the case today. Voss is alive and well today. No fire, no what. He would have got to the fire if he'd get messing around with his life, but he realized that he had to get things right. And he confessed Jesus to be Lord one day. And he got in the church down the road here. And I pray that everything in his spirit was well when he died. God bless his family today and every one of you. And thank you again on his behalf as my friend, your brother, your uncle, or whoever connection he was and how he was to you. This time, let us pray, please. Thank you, Lord, for the day, for the blessings. We know that the Word tells us that all things works to the good for them that love you. To those that are called according to your purpose, we know, Brother Voss, we can shed tears, we can cry, and we will. There's going to be times we'll mourn. There'll be times that we don't know which way to go. We're going to miss Voss, but yet I do know this. You've taken care of all matters. You said, I have it fixed for your feelings. I know how you feel. Cast your care upon me. I care for you. So, Lord, we're depending on you today, and thank you that we have assurance and hope today that our brother's absent and in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless all today. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for a Savior that died for us and given his all to us. We thank you for everything, Lord, that you made it possible for an old country boy like us all and women and whoever to know that one day we'll be at home with you where mom and dad and others that died in Christ have made the journey. Thank you now for this man's life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, brother, we're going to have a song, I believe. to heaven for a long, long time, and many things have happened that's clouded up my mind, but I am more determined to walk the narrow way, I've got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday, there's a golden street to walk upon, a bell I'm gonna ring, a brand new angel in the choir. Sing. There'll be a lot of friends awaiting when I walk through the gates. I've got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. I've been through lonesome valleys. I've climbed the highest hills. I've known the joy of living in the center of God's will. Yesterday, there's a golden street to walk upon, a bell I'm gonna ring, a brand new angel in the choir, I wanna hear her sing. There'll be a lot of friends awaiting when I walk through the gates, I've got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. truth we do have 
more today than yesterday. I want to say this in the beginning. This young man, he loved his parents. He loved his mother. And before she died, he bought a little house. And they pulled together and st stayed in the home with his mother for a few years. And that was, oh, that was touching of his heart. And Voss always talked about his mom and his dad occasionally and things of that nature. I knew Mr. Alman and also Miss Julia for a long time. But as you think about the things today that heaven is about, I want you to listen for a moment to the book of John in the 14th chapter. It's familiar to all of us about and we know what it says and I want you to hear it though for a moment. When Jesus talks to you, you ought to listen to him, hadn't you? When the Lord talks, we should listen. And he says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare that place for you, I will come again and certainly receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Why not? As the song just said, we've got more to go to heaven for than we had yesterday. Jesus said he was waiting for us. He's there. Voss is in his presence today. We don't have to worry about where we're going now. Voss might have used to know where he wasn't going. He would tell you he was going so and so, but it was on the way that he never knew where the cop would stop him for a sleep or what on the road. He would just find out that sometime there was people out there looking after him. But I'm saddened today that know that he had to leave this world. And as he had this last surgery, I didn't have much hope for him. But we took it to the Lord one night as we were talking about it. And just before he went into the hospital, I said, Voss, you can walk into that hospital, but if you go in there without Jesus being your hope and your future, you will never make it. But the Lord will be with you. He'll bless you. I was with them about a couple of years ago when they had that privilege of seeing him go through a heart stint at Smithfield, I believe. That may have been five years. I don't know. But we were there when Eloise and the family and all of them were there with him. And he was having surgery that day and having stent put in. And he made it from there, and he's been around the corner in life, and he's found a lot of situations. But I can tell you, Voss, he really knew where his blessings came from, and he knew the Lord looked after him, and he was appreciated for that. But I want you to know that when you think of this scripture, there's scripture here to back up every feeling we have, every circumstance we have. It says this, I know whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. How can we know the way? And Thomas certainly had surprise coming. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I hope and pray today that we all realize that. This death today is not necessarily a time for false. It's a time for every one of us. We're alive. We can't do much about his life. He's already lived it. But today we can live right. Every day you live, you ought to live closer to the Lord than yesterday or the day before. You ought to know that he's alive today and well. And I think the most gracious thing I had, we do television and so forth, internet worldwide. Thank the Lord for that. But as I was staying this morning over the airwaves, I said this. I said, it's amazing to see people that don't know the difference between the flesh and the spirit. Mm -hmm. I use Romans, I believe, the 8th chapter. The flesh is a bad situation. We need to learn that as Christians. You can't be a Christian and live in the flesh. You just need to get that in your mind. You've got to put up with the flesh but you don't do nothing but crucify the flesh. Get rid of it and serve the living God. God is alive today and he serves me well. I don't know what he does for you, but if you'll serve him like you ought to, you won't have to worry about the flesh. Draw nigh to me, the Lord said, and I'll draw nigh unto you. So you and I need to understand that today. 
Voss has gone on. He said, here's where you're going to lay one day to us. And we know that to be true today. And I want you to understand that. The way, the truth, and the life. Someone said, well, you go this way, you go that way. I said, well, I don't know but one way. And Jesus said it for me. Ten years ago, probably eight years ago, seven, whenever it was, the priest was over here. And the high priest of the world, so to speak, <laughs> he was over in America and everybody was following after him, thousands and thousands. I said, the day when Jesus died, he took care of all the priest business we need to know about. He took care of all those behind the doors. You go and do those things of repenting of your sin. Jesus told that thief on the cross, says, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Lord, if you'll just forgive me, I'll be happy with it. The Lord Jesus took care of that situation that day, and he took his place at Calvary, and he died for him. And that evening, the Bible says that the Lord promised him he'd see him in that very moment of spirituality and later on that day. And so it goes, your life and my life must be what? Bound in Christ. You can't be free and happy in the way of the world. You can't be going by the world. And I said this this morning on the program. I said, you know, we live in God's world. Luke, read, read the book, uh, Psalms 24. The earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof. They that dwell therein, we belong to God. And I'll tell you who owns this great world. God owns it. And people think the way we're going today that God don't have no control. He's in control of everything today. Don't you forget that. He's in control of my hair, what's left, and yours as well. He knows what's going on. Voss Beasley knew what was going on. And he knew it was time to shape up in his last few days. And I'm certainly sure that the other day when his life was taken sort of on the edge, of putting it on the edge, I'm sure he said, Lord, forgive me of everything I've ever done. And if I've ever hurt anybody, I'm sorry. Me and him talked about those things. And I tell him face value. He said, Preacher, you want to tell me things that I already know? I said, hey, you got that right. Sometimes we know it, but we don't do it, do we? Yeah. So we have to be told to do things that are right. And it's up to all of us today to do the same. But I'm glad today that I know one thing. I'm not supposed to worry about where he went. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. I've got the book in the way right here. The old King James is pretty good. I think it's good enough for me. I've had it there when cerebral hemorrhage and cancer and bleeding problems that no one could help me. Duke said, you'll die from it. I said, when? I said, well, I don't know, but they gave me a year or two, and it was in 01. So we're living today examples of being crucified. Listen to me. Crucified with him. And resurrected with him. When he saved my soul, I know I want the best person in the world. But I do know this. He saved me. He set me on a course. And I know exactly where it leads up to. The presence of God every hour of every day. Listen to the wooing of the Spirit. The Spirit, not the flesh, must, must have the final say-so in your life and my life. Honor the Lord today. Do his will. And may God be blessed as you leave this world. Maybe an epitaph read something like this. Godly made, godly served, and godly received. May it all read good because God, these are not dead folks out here. Most of them are probably home with the Lord right now. If the Lord Jesus was to come back today, you might be standing over one that was already out of here. And then all of a sudden, you would find that, wait, this is the resurrection. Jesus has come back. I'll be changed in a moment. Get ready. We need to be understood today that we're living in a time, and I want you to know this, the cemetery is not the end. It's your future. It's your future. And honor the Savior today and enjoy it, every one of you, because the Lord said, count it all joy in him. Honor the Lord. I believe Voss did. And I believe we all to have that last moment to say, thank you, Jesus, 
for touching my life and giving me a spirit. We all have his spirit if we sought for him and he saved our soul because you became spirit once he saved your soul and washed you under the blood of the precious Lamb of God. All right, let's have a song. This is pretty good, isn't it?
I hope Vince Gill lives that life, don't you? Beautiful song. I would like to say very quickly that Voss was one of those that enjoyed music. When he didn't lose his guitar out in the back of his pickup, <laughs> found it about 20 years later. That was amazing. But he loved to sing with Miss Nadine Rhodes, or maybe not sing, but play. But I, I want to say that I have always known him to be about the father's business in some category. And so Voss enjoyed doing God's will, whether it was singing or playing or whatever, or even visiting. He was a busy man. I want to say very quickly, I want you to keep in thoughts now for just a moment. We're going to open the door for a word or two from some of you all that knew him. If you'd like to say a quick word or two about Brother Voss as your uncle or brother in Christ or just whatever. If you have a word or two you'd like to share with the congregation, I want you to speak up right where you are and just let us know how and what he meant to you or whatever. So at this time, who was going to be first? When everybody start at one time, we can't hear but one. I'll say something. Brother Stewart. Bill. Um, I remember uh, back in the early 80s, we used to go down to the store at the crossroads, and he had the guitar there. He hadn't lost it. <laughs> but he would sit there and play on Saturday night, play gospel music, and we'd all sing, Nadine, and all, everybody around the community would gather at that store, and we'd have a good time on Saturday night hey. singing music. Robert Mal, I, I, I have to say this, uh, when you were talking about him not showing up on time and we're being a little bit late, uh, Voss was a, he was a veteran of the Korean War. He joined the American Legion about two months ago. <laughs> most people, most people join shortly after they get out of military service, but he waited around a little while, <laughs> but uh, the, uh, apparently, and, and I know good and well that he had, had received notices and people had asked him, uh, some of you, a lot of you know Gertrude Beaver, she constantly was on to him about joining, but about two months ago he decided it was time, so he came to see me. And he's been a member of the American Legion in, in Four Oaks for about two months. I appreciate that, Reggie. I could tell you he was slow. <laughs> Anyone else? He won't too slow if you sit side of him at the dinner table because if you turn your head, he'd get part of yours. <laughs> I appreciate it, Roy. I met Voss about 30 years ago when I married my wife and going to Stewart Chapel. And uh, we were down, me and my wife was down with some friends in Newton Grove that I knew. And the girl was talking about Dad found a guitar down there. Well, I just flipped the trigger for Angie, and we got everything back together, and Boss got his guitar back. Mm -hmm. But Boss was my buddy. Yeah. He was my friend. And he always kept me laughing. Yeah. One day, the neighbor's dogs were killing the chicken. He told me that he had told the neighbor about the dog killing the chicken. If that dog keeps coming over here to get my chicken, I'm going to kill that dog. I said, boss, you can't kill that dog. That man will whoop you. He said, I can lay my religion down on another one. <laughs> and then the last one that I, I remember was about three months ago was my father-in-law's funeral, Danny Atkins. The boss was sitting behind me. Everybody was coming through for visitation. And everybody would come up. I'd say, boss, who is that? And he would tell me. This one gentleman come up, I said, Bob, who is that? He said, if Jesus don't know him no better than I do, he's in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was all right. Who else would like to share? St. Peter, St. Peter better have a checkerboard. He'll challenge you. <laughs> Anyone else? Well, I'm just one of those cousins. And I'm telling you what, he was as fine a man as I have ever 
had the opportunity to know about and to know. He was. Fine man. And he loved it. When you go eat him, I took him a bunch of different times to the VA hospital. Yeah. And going and coming. Now, when you got ready to get back and got on 40 Highway, now you had to turn in at the Chick fil A now. You, <laughs> you might as well go in time to get you a Chick fil A and sit down and have you Chick fil A and some fries. He didn't or, never order him any fries. <laughs> But he he fries. <laughs> <laughs> like Roy said, you better not turn your head. <laughs> Anyone else? Something that always stood out with me. I'm a hugger. I hug everybody. And I, years and years and years ago, I'd go up and hug Voss, and he'd lean back like I was going, you know, bite him or rub off on him or something, or something you know. And I'd say, you're not supposed to lean away from the hug. You're supposed to lean in. <laughs> and finally he got where when I'd hug him, he'd lean in. <laughs> <laughs> that was boss for you. Anyone else? Brother Billy, I'd like to say that uh, I knew boss for a long time. When we used to go to Bethel, he was in our Sunday school class. And he had pretty reddish hair. And he really had pretty hair. And he combed that hair at least 20 times or 25 times, I believe, during Sunday school. He really combed that hair a lot. And uh, one, uh, one year, my wife fussed at me about burning wood so much. I got rid of the wood heater, and I had a whole uh, uh, shelter full of wood left. And, I, and uh, so I asked boss, I said, boss, you want some wood? And he said, yes, sir. <laughs> and so uh, we loaded that wood and, and, and uh, that wood till it was all gone. He talked about that for three or four years, right, about that all that wood I gave him. <laughs> Another time we, we went with Thomas Toole to see his his uh, father or his mother down there. And they lived way down towards Kenley. Mm -hmm. And uh, Voss went and I went and uh, Thomas and Merle. And uh, he carried the guitar. And he played that guitar every every tenth of a mile. He kept her going all the way to Ken and all the way back in Sun Song. You know, I enjoyed that. He had a real good voice, and he he, he sung in church a many of a time. He blessed my heart a many of a time. He had a good voice, and you know the Lord was in it when he when he sung and when he played that guitar. Mm -hmm. And uh, so maybe if someone else will come up in the family, that'll be another boss that'll be able to play and. and Encourage people and lift them up and uh, play music and, and, and all that ball ball. He was a good man. I'm uh, glad I knew him. And, uh, no, sir. That's the, the truth. Yeah. Anyone else? Well, I'd just like to say that Boss was very, very special to, to us. And uh, I already missed him. But as Sher Brother Sherwood was saying, his hair... My daddy ran Waydale Stanley's country store, and as a little girl, I can remember so well, boss, he kept that comb in his pocket, mm -hmm. and every time, I don't think he ever went in the store, but he'd stop, facing the, <coughs> facing the store, he'd stop there on the right-hand side, that window, and he'd, you'd see him get that comb out, and he'd stand <laughs> in front of that window, and he'd comb it, and then he'd place them waves just right, and he'd comb it. It's not been very long ago since he was at the house, and, and I asked him, I said, Boss, have you still got your comb with you all the time? Yes, it is. It's right here, and he pulled it out in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> and all, but he was, he was just very special, and I'd love for him to come to the house, and if he didn't get anything else, he'd get a caffeine-free Diet Pepsi and a pack of Lance Nabs. But if I had something cooked, he'd, he'd most of the time would sit down and eat, and uh, he, he enjoyed eating. Thank you. was some very special to, to all of us and good, great memories that we'll have. Thank you. Anyone else? We had our family reunion. We had it for 67 years. Never missed a weekend on that 67 years on Easter. How about that? And Boss, he would always be late, but he would stay late. <laughs> <laughs> you got that part right. Anyone else right quick? I want to say this, I asked him one time way back when he was probably in his 30s, he was out of service. I said, boss, don't you have a girlfriend? He said, uh, well, yeah, he went in his billfold and he pulled a picture out and he's probably showed it all of you. But there was a girl on that picture, 
she was just as cross-eyed as you've ever seen. Looked that way and that way. I said, Voss, she's really got a problem with her eyes. At and he said, yeah. He said, she can stand in the middle of the week and see both Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was pretty good. And I want to say this before I forget it. If there's one of us here that ever needed a dollar in your life, and if you ask Voss about it, he would give you or help you out. Many times I said, Boss, I need a little money. You got any? He said, Yeah, I got a little. Not the right late out and ask him, but anyway, he always had a little cash. He said, How much you need? I said, Well, I need five hundred dollars. He said, Five hundred, let's see if he go to digging that bill for and sliding directly, he'd slide out with five hundred dollars. I said, Now boss, I'll give you I'll give it back to you and say a couple of weeks or whatever. Two weeks ago, by and I'd carry the money to him. He said, just keep it a while longer. I said, no, I want to pay you back. He said, I don't want to take too much around all the time. I said, I might get robbed or something. <laughs> he wanted me to keep it for him. But anyway, he loved all of us. He was a special person. And you have and will miss one of the most gracious men that we, as the little lady said, we've ever met. Foss was who he was. He was a man that he grew up in Leslie Gray's home, a lot of it, and all these children, different places, and he was just one of those that you could enjoy if you ever met him. Uh, he would do a lot for you, but I can tell you, Voss Beastie was a man that you didn't have to worry about. If you were a husband, had a wife, he might go to your house. You didn't have to worry about her being bothered. He would not bother no one else, period, and so forth. If no other remark, I want to share this thought with you. What is our future today? We need hope, don't we? We need hope today. Jesus said it well when he was in the book here of the 11th chapter of John. He was speaking about Lazarus' death. He spoke well well of Lazarus and he spoke well of Lazarus future and where he was at that day in death and here's what he said just a short brief reminder of the words there in this scripture verse and I want to share with you there was many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort that concerning their brother Lazarus death then Martha as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming went and met him but Mary's set still in the house. Now, if you've been one of those that sits in the house still, I want you to know that you need to get up about the Father's business. And let's go. You might can't do much, but you can go on your knees at least and pray for all of that can go and go forward. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my mother, a brother had not have died. And then all of a sudden, but I know that even now, whatsoever... Thou will ask of God, God will give it. And these are the next two verses or so I want you to hear. Jesus saith unto her, Martha and Mary, thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last days. And listen to this now. And I like this because I know it's so true today. I don't have any power over death and none of us do. But I can tell you who does, and he lives in my heart today by his spirit. And here's what he said. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. So today, Voss Beard is not dead. His body may be laying before us as something that won't ever go to heaven anyway, except a glorified one later maybe. But the fact is that we have to understand our hope is in the Savior today. Our hope is in the Lord Jesus today. And as soon as he said that, whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And then a few minutes later, he called for Lazarus to come forth. Lazarus came forth, bound hand and foot. And guess what? The Lord said, loose him. Get that mess off of him. Let him go. He's free. Free from death, free from death, and never to worry about death. He's in me now, and he's a new creation. 
you and I have that privilege today to know that we've been born into the family of God. The day you accepted the Lord Jesus, you became a son of God like Jesus Christ really. We're sons and daughters and just simply bound by the Savior to be what we need to be today. Live your life as a Christian today. Voss did well at it. I know we won't perfect. None of us will be. But the thing about it is Jesus Christ made us perfect in that he said we are going to be like him one day. And we are trying to practice that even today as we live our lives. God bless you today is our prayer. And I hope and pray that the life of this man has affected you like it has everyone that knew him. I would remember the last few days he was in the nursing home. And he said something like this to me one day. He said, I, I want you to uh, carry me out of here. <laughs> he yeah. said, I want to get out of here. Mm -hmm. I said, Voss, I can't carry you out of here. I don't need to do that. I'd be arrested for taking the patient out of the nursing home. He said, yeah, but said, I'm going to go to Four Oaks. And Larry, uh, I believe it was Bobby Adams and Larry Adams, I believe, he said, carry me to Four Oaks, and Larry will be there around McDonald's, and he'll carry me to where I want to go, you know, Durham or whatever that day. And so I told him, I said, boss, I care about you, but I'm not carrying you away from here because I don't want to be locked up. But anyway, he was just that way. But Voss, he was a special man, and we could talk. Dennis Dunn said yesterday to me, he said, Billy, you got a lot of stuff to talk about tomorrow. It'll take you a long time. I said, no. I'm just going to talk shortly and remind you who Voss Beasley was, and you can do all the thinking yourself and go down that road of thoughts and memories from this day forward. Honor the Lord today. Do those things that are important in your life today. Voss lived a life that I believe the Lord prepared for him to live, and I hope and pray that you will find it so true today. And as we come to this time to have the uh, closing remarks and his closure. We want to say these words in the book of First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. And I want you to know this, and the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel with the trump of god and the dead in christ shall rise first that's the message today that's our hope today and we must understand that and i hope today that you realize that as well and as you remember this young man remember he lived his life and he lived it accordingly to the way his spirit led him so don't question him too bad when he was a little bit up on you a little bit or this or that or the other. Just remember that maybe the Lord told him to do that for you. Now, might something, we can't lay it all to the Lord, can we? But anyway, some of it might be possible that the Lord had him to say that to you. But God bless you as our prayer. And I'm going to recognize his pastor, Brother Lancaster, I believe it is. And let him, Brother Freddie, if he will, say the benediction. say this, as much as good has been said about him, if it won't for one other man, we'd have no hope today. Not only him, nor would you, nor nor would I. The hero of this hour is not Boss Beasley, even though he was a good man. Yeah. The hero of this hour is the Son of God, Jesus Christ, yeah. who lived and who died your sins and mine. We look at heaven like it's a far off, but the truth is, yours may be before the sun comes down today. I don't know. But I do know this. It ain't boss's goodness that'll get into heaven. 
It's the Son of God. Because our righteousness is a filthy rag before God. We have one hope, all of us today. And that's Jesus Christ, the righteous. So as I close this prayer today, I think we ought to honor Him. Boss has been honored. And I'll tell you today, I believe Boss, where he's at today, is honoring God too. Amen. Amen. Our Father and our God, we love you today. We thank you, Lord, for this day and every day. We certainly, God, thank you for the life of all God. I thank you, Lord, for your life. I thank you for laying it down, Lord God, that we all might have put it There's not a one of us that would have died. Lord, I thank you for this each and every one. And God, if there be one here today, God knows you, Lord, and Savior of your life. They've never made it, they've never confessed their sins. I pray, God, before they leave this world, somehow or another, God, you'll get a hold of their heart. And, God, you'll become the hero of their life. Yeah. And, God, we ask you today, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Brother Vaughn served in the military, and so at this time we'll turn it over to our, to our Brother Justin and the family.